In this down economy, there is a temptation for fleets to keep their vehicles in service longer. Is that a wise move? And what impact does driver behavior have on fleet costs? If we take a look at our portfolio, we've seen a lot of changes in it over the last 24 months for two reasons. Number one, people trying to lower their carbon emissions, but the economy has put such pressure on them. So not only have we seen people move from six cylinders down to four cylinders, we've also seen them move in almost in, into a smaller vehicle with a smaller cap cost, which um, has been a big cultural change. So not only are you getting a smaller engine, you're getting a smaller vehicle. Um, with that, uh, there's no doubt that there's very few uh, full full size sedans anymore that are are, are six cylinders. Sure, you got your 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 mainstays like the Impala and the 300, um, but so many people have moved to a vehicle like the Fusion and the four cylinder Fusion at that. So a lot of opportunity there. But it's really interesting as you start looking forward. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity in terms of cafe standards and where they're going. Uh, we're looking over the next six years at roughly a 40% improvement in those standards. So that's going to translate into hard MPG. And again, with the economy, we've had so many customers uh, have the temptation to hold on to their vehicles longer because they perceive save costs by lower lease payment because it's an older vehicle or it's been depreciated. But um, while you, you, you achieve short-term savings uh, in terms of the payments, you see your maintenance costs begin to creep up. And, and those repairs start stacking up, your town time starts going up. But at the same time, if you're not replacing that vehicle, you're missing out on this trend of cafe improvements. So you're getting a more fuel efficient vehicle that can really change your fuel spend. So at the end of the day, we actually just completed a, a white paper on this that's on Donlin.com that walks through all the different facets. We did it in conjunction with our client advisory board and said, okay, if this is your standard vehicle, where do your payments go over a, a long period of time? And then where do you go in terms of maintenance cost, fuel, op, fuel economy, um, the ability to lower your carbon if you do make that change? Or how are you going to improve downtime? And what is that true math behind it? And what's the data? So you can take that to your organization and say, you want me to save money, but by holding my vehicles, that's not really going to happen. A lot of people moving to four-cylinder vehicles. A lot of people have moved to hybrid vehicles. And it's, it's been really interesting to watch that and measure that and see that improvement. But at the same time, there's such an opportunity out there. Um, for example, I was looking at across our whole database the other day of the MPG on, on a vehicle like a Camry six-cylinder. So a Toyota Camry, its average uh, MPG was anywhere from uh, 21 MPG up to 28 MPG. Um, that's a huge range. Think about the opportunity there. You have a seven, eight MPG swing within your fleet with the same type of vehicle. It's looking at a four-cylinder Fusion. Same example there. You get a six MPG spread on all vehicles. So again, there's an opportunity. You gave somebody a tool. Are they maximizing that tool? A Toyota Prius, for example, we see MPGs ranging anywhere from, from low 30s almost to 60 MPG. And so you've given someone such an efficient tool, but at the same time, they're not properly using it. And driver behavior is such a big piece of that. The EPA says 33% of, of a vehicle's MPG is impacted by the driver. You can see that in some of those ranges. So it, we're working with uh, actually Green Driver to do a series of six-month studies with uh, some national fleets to actually measure through both telematics, fuel program, uh, processes to understand their actual spend and consumption, to be able to create scorecards for the driver so we can understand, are they truly achieving the goals that they've set up for the company day in, day out? It's one thing to train a driver and say, don't speed, don't do jackrabbit starts, but are they actually practicing that behavior behind the wheel day in, day out, and getting those MPG savings that you're looking for?